Hello, how are you? I'm back here now to show you the final stage of the uh, adults wreath making um, demonstration and um, this one has been a fairly long make because every single bit of it has been made from scratch in, from the wreath right down to every single flower and leaf so that takes quite a while. Yesterday I did a little bit more work on this piece so it's like a little kind of a crescent moon shape arrangement that I'm making that I can then wire onto this wreath and uh, I'll be able to hang that at my door. So I've worked from one end down with all the pieces that we made, the leaves, the little um, beach stalks with the little yellow flowers on them and then each individual flower and I've wired and taped all of that down one side. I want to come now from the other direction. I'm just going to show you how I finish this off. So I'll decide what I want to start this end with, which I would put a, a background piece. So as I was saying to you, this particular um, tape is quite sticky. And I'll just tilt that down so you can actually see what I'm doing here. So it's that special tape called um, Gutta and it's it has that sticky quality that will make it attach to itself so and then obviously it's all nice and green so you don't well you can get it in green or brown depending on what piece you're working on so i'm just going to take that a little so that that starts to blend and i'll probably push just to balance it up another leaf here so this is why you wire all of these individually it's so that you can then add them in as you go and they will all work together and then probably another wee one there so I'll just tuck that in then there's a bit you've got great control over it now because everything is wired don't worry if your tape the tape breaks off it can just be reattached and blended then the more I put on that the more we'll tape up as we go you don't want it to get too thick. So I'm going to start, I had a nice bud one at that end. I'm going to start with a closed bud on this one as well. And again, hold it there and twist the end of my wire around. The purpose of that tape as well is also to cover in the ends of the wires because they'll be quite sharp and you don't want any um, raw edges of quite sticky, sharp wire bits that could uh, hurt. I'm, just going to, I'm actually going to go over them a good bit because they will keep piercing for a while so I'll give it a good coating. Now, all wrapped up and that's really secure and then I can bend this any which way I want. So I'm going to come down, give it a little bit of the yellow. I've broken down the yellow pieces. Now because this is a natural material it's not going to bend the same way so I decide where I want it and leave it there i'll just put a bit of tape around it but i do have to be careful because it doesn't have a wire in it to be as uh, malleable as the rest of the piece but if it breaks it breaks but hopefully it won't okay i have two more big pieces to work with so i think i've got another petal or two around this of my leaves and again the more you keep wiring on the thicker this main piece here frame piece is going to get and the stronger it gets so I'll pop that one there I want another something here in this gap I'm going to go with one there yeah I like that so it's all about really what you like how you want your piece to look can be as full or as sparse as you like. Take another piece of tape and keep going over this. And as you probably guessed at this stage, I'm better at making things than I am at recording and technological stuff. Uh, but hopefully, the more I um, do of it, 
the better I guess at it. So I've apologised for my amateurness in that regard. But I'm a work in progress in that respect. I'm going to bend that out. more tape in there. And I'm telling you, it, it makes me appreciate all the hard work I used to put into those floral bouquets back in the day. Um, I will be working hours and hours into the night with raw fingers from all the wiring. But it was worth it all when you handed over those bouquets to their to the brides on their morning special days. Okay, I think that one there and one last bud here is where I'm going to be going with that. I'm just place a couple of more leaves to just so I don't have um, a lot of gap in it so and once it's all wired up you can then maneuver it around as you need to so a little bit more yellow in here I think if I'll get it in there. I can actually stick that in now. sticking out. That's nice. Yeah and this is how it's going to kind of sit on my wreath. And one last one kind of in here I think. Yeah a nice big main one there. I like that. Very happy with that. yellow forward without breaking it. I might put a bit of ribbon in the middle there just to give it a little bit of balance. I just want to cover up the ends of those wires now just to make sure there's nothing horrible and spiky sticking out so you can see where they, they finish. Get a little pliers, make sure to turn them inward. I can't really put a huge amount of tension on this tape at the moment because Kind of awkward to try and get it in and through everything but the main aim is to just cover over the exposed pieces there. Tape it up, I can feel one more sharp bit there. Just press it in. any fingers then. I'm quite pleased with that how it's looking and to make a bow I've made a double bow for the top and I'm going to show you how I do this so this is a nice piece of um a voile ribbon I have and then more of the florist uh, poly ribbon 
um, like this that I used. And the way to make a bow is to get a piece, um, it's not quite a metre long, probably a foot and a half, two feet max. Hold it in the middle and decide how big you want each loop side to be, leaving enough of a tail. So bring one piece to the back and another piece across. So you're making an X with it. So as if you had put a scarf around a neck like that and bring the back to the front. So you have your two loops either side and your two tail pieces either side. And where they all cross in the middle, start to gather it in like that. Pinch it all in together and have ready a piece of string, whatever, uh, it's a piece of the ribbon put down to tie a knot in the middle. So I hold those together and tie the knot at the back. This can be where you wish you had another hand. But so double, double tie the knot. So you can see now the way that the bow is. So you can press your, your bow loops out and just trim off the ends to make a nice point. Fold the ribbon in half and cut from the corner into the middle. So if you go that way, you'll get a nice point on each end then. So the same again, fold it, put the corners together and go from the corner into the middle. That's nice. You can, like I could, tie that in there if I want to. I'm going to actually pop it in. I'm not so sure actually, I think it's nice without it, but that'll just show you how to do, do a bow. So in order to put this onto my wreath, I'm actually going to get a bit of thinner wire or a bit of garden wire, whatever you want. You could actually use a bit of string as well, just the wire is handy. So I'm just going to cut, clip a few shorter pieces of that. You could glue it on as well if you want, but I want to be able to take this off. And the loops that are made either end on this are a handy way of, you put the wire through the loop, then decide, okay, there's my middle. I want this to kind of be just slightly off center at the end. So I'm going to put it through. So that way I can tighten it up and then tuck the wires back in, out of the way. And nothing is seen there. I'm going to do the same on the other end, and probably one then just in the middle. So the loop on the other end, I'll go through. The ribbon is in my way here, so I'm going to come down a bit. the wire through first. There we go. And then put it through the loop. And just tighten that. So it's not going to blow off. It's not going to blow away. Because I'm going to put this on my front door for now. The weather's really nice at the moment. I suppose if it was absolutely awful weather, I'd probably take it in because it would likely get blown away. If it's stormy. So you can mould it to whichever way you want. I'm going to put another bit of wire here in the centre just for security. Just twist that in. And when I look at it, I'm going to hold that up. I might need to do a bit of adjusting. Oops, lost a little, a little bow there. I can stick that back on afterwards and tip them out, you know, move your leaves around. But I think that looks pretty good. I'll just pop my, my flower on up here and I am going to stick this on because it's easier. I could wire it if I liked, but I'm being uh, a bit quick with it now at the moment. And if you want to, you could stick on to the little sticks a few more of the yellow flowers and give it 
um, a nice kind of a bit more pop more of color. So I don't know if you can see that there. This is our Easter spring wreath. And I think I'm going to pop it up on, on the front door. I'm quite pleased with that. Pleased to know that I've made every single flower on it. Um, a bit of a slow process, but I think worth it in the end. So hope everybody's keeping well during the lockdown and that you have a lovely Easter time and get to enjoy some of this sunshine. And hopefully you'll try and make uh, one of these yourselves. If you didn't want to do all the flower parts, you could actually buy... Um, artificial flowers and uh, do up a wreath yourself um, with those if the flower part is too too hard or just make the flowers and have a lovely vase of flowers that will never wilt for you. Take care, bye bye.